the eyes provide a convenient and simple way of examining many aspects of the central nervous system, including all these afferent and efferent pathways. This video is about how to test eye movements in a simplified fashion. The examination of eye movements can be very complex and occupies most of the careers of orthoptists, neurologists and ophthalmologists. But for your purposes, I suggest that a simplified eye movement examination will help you to detect many aspects of brain dis stem disease. You can detect raised intracranial pressure and detect diffuse brain insult in three easy moves. First though, you should inquire from the patient about any double vision. Next, you should inspect the eyes as with any clinical examination. Now here, many people are tempted to get the patient to look at their finger, but I would strongly encourage you to use a point source of light. The advantage of this for the patient is that they only have one point to look at rather than a line. And the advantage for the doctor is that they can see the reflection of the cornea of the light and can therefore determine whether the patient's eyes are straight or not. Then you take the eyes into slow left gaze and then slow right gaze. Here we can see that in far left gaze the patient has no left sixth nerve palsy because they can fully abduct the left eye. We can tell that the patient has no right third nerve palsy because they can fully adduct the right eye. Neither eye shows any nystagmus at the far left gaze and therefore we can tell quite a lot about the state of the brain and the cerebellum that there is no end gaze nystagmus. Furthermore, there is no abducting nystagmus whereby the left eye shows nystagmus and the right eye does not adduct. That would be an internuclear ophthalmoplegia, which is a fairly common accompaniment to multiple sclerosis. Finally, we can tell that there's no Duane's syndrome. This is a congenital cranial disinnervation disorder, which results in an absence of abduction of one eye. Similarly, therefore, when you get the patient to look in the other way, you can tell that she does not have a right sixth nerve palsy, a left third nerve palsy, there is no end gaze nystagmus, there is no internuclear ophthalmoplegia, and no Duane syndrome restricting abduction of the right eye. Next, you instruct the patient to follow your pen torch as you move it slowly upwards. A patient with acutely raised intracranial pressure may exhibit convergence retraction nystagmus, also known as paranodes sign. And uh, this is where on attempted up gaze the eyes develop a nystagmus of convergence and can also be seen slightly to be retracted back into the eye socket. After sustained up gaze of 20 or 30 seconds, the patient may develop a ptosis, that's a droopy eyelid, suggestive of myasthenia gravis. So these are two conditions that can be ruled out by just getting the patient to look straight up. Let's look at the entire sequence for completeness now. The patient follows your pen torch into far left gaze, ruling out nystagmus and restrictions of eye movements before returning to the primary position and then to the right, at all times looking at the corneal reflection of your pen torch. And then the patient looks into far up gaze to look for signs of convergence retraction nystagmus and after sustained up gaze to see if there is a ptosis suggestive of myasthenia gravis. So a much simplified eye movement examination is very quick and provided you use a pen torch can also be quite accurate. 
You can detect cranial neuropathies this way. You can detect raised intracranial pressure this way. And you can detect diffuse brain disease. Thank you very much for your attention.